Hi, my name is Michael Cullen for Film Sound Tutorials, and we're back with another video for the video series of a one-man workflow for post-film sound. And in this video, we're going to talk about editing ADR and group tracks. Now, in this point of the process, I've been sending all of my edits and my work to the director and producers so they can check out and see how the film is doing. And at this point, normally they have some changes. And the changes normally have to deal with dialogue and trying to help the dialogue better tell the story. And so what we will do is ADR. And so ADR is automated dialogue replacement where we bring in the actors into the studio and we have them re-record their lines for a variety of reasons. It could be performance issues. It could be recording issues. It could be story issues. It could be changing of lines. There's a whole variety of reasons that the director and the producers might want to change the dialogue. Along with recording ADR, when we're on set, we don't actually record any of the background actors or any noise and any audio besides the main character's dialogues. And so while we're in the studio, we also hire group or Walla actors to record all of the mumblings and background noise that we need for the film. And so for Murphy's Law, we recorded some ADR and some group tracks to help better tell the story. And so just like my Foley tracks, I recorded and edited the audio clips in another session. And then I'm going to pull that edited session into my main super session here. And since ADR is related to the dialogue family, I normally bring in the tracks right after the dialogue tracks here. So I'll put it right underneath FUTS 8. And then we'll go file, import, session data. And here's my Murphy's Law folder with all my different sessions and audio files. And it's going to be in the ADR folder. Here's the session that I recorded everything in. And then once I edited all the dialogue and the group tracks, I brought it in into my edited session. And so here we are. We have my video track, my guide track, my four mono tracks for ADR, which is all the main characters. And then my group tracks, which is two mono tracks and then two stereo tracks. We will import those in. Great. So you can see that all of our ADR imported into our super session here. And since I use the same time code between all of the sessions, all of the edited audio clips imported with the correct timing to the picture lock. And so let me just show you what we did. We did a lot of recording for Murphy, mostly for recording issues that happened on set. And so you can see here I have Murphy's ADR that we did, and then I have his production track here, which is in the FUTS track because he's talking through a bullhorn. And what I've done is that all the production audio that I'm deciding not to use, I have muted it, but still kept it in place just in case the director or the producers want to go back to it. So let me show you just the difference in sound between the ADR and the FUTS track. The ADR is on the bottom. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. <sighs> Hello, sir. My name's Officer Murphy. What's your name? So you can see one of the problems with ADR is that because it is recorded in a pristine studio, it's much clearer than the production audio. And so that's one thing you have to keep in mind during the mixing process to be able to mix the ADR and dole the ADR to sound like the production audio. Another thing I wanted to show was in Murphy's Law, we have a puppet who's an awesome character here. And on set, we had a puppeteer who, which was fantastic. However, for more comedic effect, the director decided to hire a voice actor to see if he could create a different character for the film. And so here's the puppeteer who I believe is on dialogue three. And let me just pull this track down for the moment. And so we have the puppeteer on dialogue three, and then we have the new voice actor on ADR four. And I'll just solo the original puppeteer so you can hear him. You screw up one more time, one more time, and you're off the force. And then here's the new voice actor that we got in for the puppet. You screw up one more time, one more time, and you're off the force. So a little bit different, and it makes a different character. Now, one of the things that I did do 
and you can see is that I highly edited the ADR clips. And to help do that, I used the feature in Pro Tools called a playlist to be able to have all my different takes within one audio track. And so if you see over here, instead of looking at waveform, let's look at the playlist view. And here I have all the alternate takes of the voice actor saying his lines. And so, for example, instead of using the take that I picked here, Let's go up one more time. The director could choose uh, perhaps something like this. You screw up one more time. And so you can see how there's a little bit different inflection in that take versus another take. But playlists are a really handy feature to be able to swap out different takes very easily while keeping all of your alternate takes nice and organized within your session. Now, of course, when we recorded this ADR, it didn't match up perfectly with the production audio. Instead, I can even show you that the original take was a little bit different. To be able to match the puppeteer, I had to edit this new ADR track to fix the timing. And so of course I can move it around and try to match up the peaks. What I can also do, a nice feature in Pro Tools, if you need to stretch out a clip, you can go up here and use the time compression or expansion trimmer instead. And I can pull out my clip and then the new clip will be an expanded version of the original audio. Of course, too, I can pull it in and it will compress it as well. And what we're looking to do is to have the peaks of the new ADR be similar to the peaks of the recorded audio. But of course, the best way to ensure that your ADR matches up is to just listen to it for yourself. Let me put this back to the standard trim tool and turn on my smart tool, which I like to use the best. You screw up one more time. One more time. And you can see how that works really well. So let me put this uh, dialogue track back to its original place in between dialogue two and three. And what I wanted to show you next is how group helps fill out the scene of a shot. Now, at the end of the film, Murphy's wife comes out with the crowd. And to record the wife's dialogue, I had to ensure that the entire crowd was silent while shooting on set. Here's the only thing that we recorded during this shot. So the wife is on dialogue two. Murphy, I saw the whole thing. I'm so proud of you, baby. It's a boy. So as you can see, it's a little uncanny to have her talking and then have this woman in the blonde yelling and the woman in the blue sweatshirt behind her yelling as well, but not hear them. And so that's where group comes in. And so what I did do within my group tracks is I recorded the woman on the blue sweater, which is on group two, and then the blonde woman that comes over to the left side of the screen on the group one track. And so let me show you what that sounds like now with them recorded. Yeah, Murphy! And so you can see how I painstakingly ensured that those little callouts match their mouths. And then to add on top of that, I recorded a group of about five or six actors in stereo to provide the chanting noises behind the wife. And here those are. And so now you can see how the group has really helped filling out the scene sonically. And so let's play it all together now with the wife talking as well. Ah. Murphy. Murphy! I saw the whole thing. I'm so proud of you, baby. It's a boy! So I think that really helps demonstrate the purpose of using group to record Walla and call out lines for your scene. So the last thing we're going to want to do is we're gonna save copy in this session. So we have a new session to save this super session with our new ADR and group tracks. 
And of course, we're going to save this within the editorial folder. And you can see all of my other save copy ins as well. ADR. And this is getting a little unwieldy. So if you wanted to name it just Super Session, you could also do that. So that's what I'm going to do. Because now this has almost everything that we need. And the date is 6-19-16. And we will save that. So this concludes this short video on ADR. In the future, I'll create a video that shows how to actually record ADR within a studio environment. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.